Hi, everyone. Welcome to day two of our three-part series. I'm Christina, one of your From Pregnant to Parent Coaches, and I'm here to talk with you about the second myth that we're going to be debunking today. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So Rochelle talked to you about the first myth, and today we're going to be talking about myth number two, all parenting comes naturally. Fact. The truth is that parenting is a learned skill. And while there are some aspects that may come naturally to you, we aren't born with all the skills necessary built into our DNA. It really does take time, practice, and effort to become a good parent. So you are in the right place if you have recently become a parent or you're preparing to welcome a new baby into your family. If you're feeling eager to learn and you maybe don't know where to start or what questions to ask, we have got you. You are definitely, definitely in the right spot. Um, or if you're wanting to expand your parenting village, whether it's with other peers or if you're looking for experts to help guide and support you. This may not be the right place for you if you're committed to figuring out as you go, or if science-backed information isn't a priority for you, or if maybe starting a family is a distant goal, or perhaps you're well past this phase. So heads up, make sure to check out this exciting new offer that we'll be sharing at the end of this video. Um, and we'll be sharing a opportunity that only you get to access. Um, so stick around and I'll share more at the end. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Christina. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and parent educator. Um, I am a certified retain parental leave coach. And a fun fact is that Rochelle, Emily, and I all were in the same cohort and bonded over our passion for supporting growing families. I'm also a certified fair play facilitator. And last but definitely not least, I am the mom to two amazing wild, crazy, energetic boys. Um, so a little bit about my story. I have been working in the field of reproductive health and mental health for many, many years. Um, and while I've always had a passion for this, it really wasn't until becoming a mom myself that I realized and kind of awakened in me a new dedication and calling to really wanting to support moms and families in this unique phase of life. I really see it as a true honor to support and hold space for, for families as they navigate this. What I realized both professionally and as a mom is that there really is no such thing as the perfect parent and kids don't need perfection. What they really need most is you, your perfectly imperfect self. Um, I also learned that self-care is anything but selfish. It's really a vital part of maintaining health and wellness um, for you, for your family, for everyone. And last, that we really can't do this alone. We truly need help and support. So what we do here at Pregnant From Parent, we are a team of expert coaches that guide families through pregnancy and the first years of parenthood to help reduce anxiety, build skills, and increase self-efficacy. We are truly here to help you take the yikes out of becoming a parent that we're driven by providing compassionate, professional, and caring support during this um, really dynamic phase of life. So um, I wanna share with you a testimonial um, from a client that I had a chance to work with. Um, you can take a second to read the very, very kind words that they had to say. Um, and it's so touching to kind of hear from clients and their experience. And if you sign up with us here at From Pregnant to Parent, you can have a chance to experience it as well. So let's go back to that myth. Parenting all comes naturally. Um, you likely may have heard this before. I know I did. And, you know, we're not born with these innate skills. Um, it really does take practice, effort, and time to really become a good parent. Many parents assume that they will bond with their baby instantly, trust that they will intuitively have all the answers, and kind of hope that they'll just know what to do. But it's natural to have doubts and questions along the way. The reality is parenting is full of surprises. And even if you have experience with babies or young children, nieces and nephews, each child is totally unique. 
and parenthood requires some amount of trial, error, and especially practice. So let's jump into lesson one. Learning new skills and information will help you as you hone your intuition as a new parent. So like all big transitions in life, becoming a parent is a big, big adjustment, right? And likely needs a little bit of preparing and practicing and training. So these are three things that you probably wouldn't do without at least some preparation. With all of the information literally at our fingertips, it's unlikely that if you're traveling to another country, you're probably going to jump on Yelp and check out what restaurant you want to go to, where you want to stay, what you want to do, right? Similarly, if you're making a major investment or a purchase, like buying a house or purchasing a car, you are going to want to do some research, look into, you know, talking to realtors, maybe looking at other houses in the area, right? What their school districts are like. And lastly, if you're going to run a marathon, right, you're probably going to want to do some research into what race do you want to do? What kind of distance are you looking to train for? What kind of training plan do you want to do? So I want to lean into this last metaphor a little bit more. Um, I can't think of a better analogy that really kind of talks about what parenting is like. And for me, I really see parenting like similar to running a marathon. Um, and I am fortunate to both be a mom and have run a marathon and done a triathlon. Um, so I can really speak to the similarities. Both are an endurance event that require stamina, support, and training to prepare. They're both physically and mentally grueling with huge rewards at the end, right? And like each pregnancy and child, every race is totally different, um, even from one moment to the next. Having a strategy helps to prepare you for the un unexpected, especially and if things change. Um, interesting note, so this is a picture of me doing my first Ironman race. Um, I actually had trained for a completely different race than this picture. Um, I was all set to do one race and the day of it got canceled because of air quality concerns. So I had to do a complete pivot and um, adjust and make it work. And so here I am doing this last, this other race. Um, and I had little idea that this would actually be such good training and practice um, for becoming a parent. Now, without that, pre that preparation, could you finish a race? Sure, but you probably wouldn't enjoy it as much if you had practiced, worked with a coach, and surrounded yourself with a like-minded community working towards the same goal. So let's talk about lesson two. Knowing your options is crucial for making intuitive decisions. Otherwise, you may ignore that inner voice altogether. So think about it. You have to know your options to have options. If you don't know that there's another way to do things, you may end up ignoring or not listening to your intuition because you think that's just how it's done. So I want to talk about an example that kind of can show up in real life. And the example that comes to mind is kind of something that a person may experience in those really early days of new parenthood. Um, so you may, in a, or in a birth class or maybe read a book, you may learn about different soothing techniques. And one of them that might come up is learning to swaddle, right? And so you may read about it. You may watch a YouTube video on how to swaddle. You may even have a chance to practice swaddling a baby doll, right? Which is very different than swaddling a newborn, right? But it isn't until you try it, right? You, until you get to do the swaddle for the first time that you get, that you learn and practice. And I will never forget, um, watching my husband try to swaddle our first son. Um, those, you know, the day after he was born, watching him in the hospital and he was struggling. He had watched the videos, he had done the class. Um, and here he was trying to figure it out and he was having a hard time right at that time. Um, a nurse came in and she, of course, took the swaddle, took our son and, you know, swaddled him up in the most amazing swaddle, right? Um, now, was she naturally gifted at swaddling? Maybe, 
but more likely than not, her mastery came from years of practice and experience, right? So by the time we left the hospital, my husband had really gotten much, much better at swaddling. Um, but we eventually, kind of learning our options and assessing what worked for us, we pivoted a little bit and we decided to start using the Velcro swaddles. We found that for us, you know, it worked well. And a lot of this decision was impacted by noticing and reading my son's cues. He happened to be one of those little kiddos that liked a really tight swaddle. And we could get that with the Velcro swaddle, right? So we adjusted and pivoted along the way. Now, I am not saying that you need to swaddle your child or that you need to go out and invest in Velcro, sw in Velcro swaddles. Not at all. Every child is different. Every family is different. And your needs are going to change. Part of it is knowing your options so that you can confidently make choices that work best for you and your family. Learning skills and gaining better understanding of your child and their development helps us to better adjust to how we approach and how do we respond to their cues and needs. It's really through practice that we become better at this, right? And that the relationship grows and that emotional connection strengthens. And this really is the foundation for creating healthy attachment and bonding. Okay, let's jump into lesson number three. Regardless of how natural parenting may feel, it's important to have a safe space for emotional release, validation, and connection. We know that becoming a parent is one of the biggest changes that a person will go through, right? And it's understandable to have hopes and expectations and assumptions for how it's going to go, right? And some of those things will go as planned and might be what, how you imagined and other things are going to be completely different, right? And so we talk a lot about this idea of ex expectations versus reality, right? This idea that, you know, the expectation that I'll love every moment of parenthood. We know that parenting is incredibly rewarding. It's also really demanding. Feeding my baby will be easy and come naturally. We know that feeding at times can be challenging and it may actually require support from a professional. I will feel an instant and overwhelming bond with my baby. We know that sometimes bonding with a new baby can take time and it might not happen immediately. My baby will seamlessly fit into my life. Maybe in some ways your life will stay the same and in other ways it's going to be completely different. I'll never do blank when I have kids. I'm guilty of saying that you have an idea of how it's going to go. And we know that it's about learning and growing alongside your child and doing what's best for them and for your family. Now, when we have expectations or assumptions that don't match reality, right? It may lead to feelings of disappointment or shame, maybe overwhelm or just confusion, right? That it wasn't what they expected. And for some people, that may lead to feeling less enjoyment of this phase of life um, or questioning, am I doing a good enough job? This isn't what I expected. For some people, it can also lead to a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder or also referred to as PMADs. We know that PMADs are very common. One in seven birthing parents will experience a postpartum mood and anxiety disorder. It's not just for birthing partners, partners and, or birthing parents, partners and dads can experience a PMAD, one in 10. We know 9% will experience postpartum, post-traumatic post stress disorder, and one in three women of color will experience a PMAD. Now, we know that they're common. We also know that a lot of people don't talk about it, and we we spend a lot of time talking about mental health because this is an important phase of life. It's also a vulnerable phase of life. And we know that talking about it and getting support helps to prevent and helps to treat for postpartum mood and anxiety disorders. We know that they are incredibly responsive to treatment and that interventions help the outcome of baby and of mom or of the parent. Um, we know that many people suffer with in silence, not talking about it. And so that having a space to explore and talk about all the things that come up with being a parent, right? To feel more supported, less isolated, and better equipped to handle 
the ups and downs of parenthood, whether it's just navigating the new reality of it, or, you know, whether it's experiencing a post uh, postpartum anxiety or mood disorder. It's important to remember that parenting is dynamic. It's an ever evolving process. It's okay to make mistakes to adjust and try new things as you go, right? Because you and your little one, you're learning and growing alongside each other and that you truly don't have to figure it out on your own. You can have support and you can have the help of a running buddy to, to run alongside you, to support you, to cheer you on along the way. So if you are looking for some help, we have some exciting news to share with you. So remember that special offer and discount that I had mentioned at the beginning of the video. Well, here it is. We are launching our first group coaching experience. We are so excited. We've been working really hard behind the scenes um, to make this available to you. And we are ready to share it with the world. And you get the first uh, view into it. So no more overwhelm as you try to figure out what you need to know, what resources you can trust, or where to find information. No more cramming it into one day or one long weekend to, to learn it all whether or not you will may remember it or recall all the information later. And no more learning alongside strangers or people that you might not talk to or see again. We want to set you up for success by learning from knowledgeable experts with a community of support that doesn't disappear after baby arrives. So we have a group for each phase. We'll be launching three different groups, preparing for parenthood the first 12 weeks and beyond the fourth trimester. We have some incredible information and material and learning in all three of these groups. Um, our signature approach comprises education, coaching, and community. All three of these things, which are so, so important um, in supporting women and parents through this phase. I am so excited to be launching with our groups and I will be running the first 12 weeks group. I love working with new parents and new little ones. Um, we are going to be talking about some incredibly important things in these uh, sessions. The first session we'll be talking about the fourth trimester. Yes, there is a fourth trimester. Um, we'll be talking about navigating the emotional roller coaster. In se session two, we'll be talking about kind of settling into parenthood looking at the myths that we're told and how to find our own way. In session three, we'll be talking about real self-care and the importance of sleep. In session four, we'll kind of be doing, we'll be doing a check-in, assessing all three spheres of support and seeing how are you doing? Where do we need to get you more support? Session five will be focused on reflecting on your unique values and exploring this new identity shift that you are navigating. And in our last session, we'll be talking about what comes next and how to kind of move beyond this first, um, this first phase as a new parent. Here's another um, testimonial from a person who I had a chance to work closely with just to get a sense of the support that we um, work so hard to provide for our new and expecting clients. I'll give you a chance to, to read this. It's really touching to just sit and see all these, these beautiful words. So that bonus offer for this launch, let's talk about it. Um, when you sign up today, you will get three months of free access to The Village, which is our online membership community moderated by all of us coaches. It includes community feed, monthly webinars, free, free resources, and so much more. You'll be saving $100 for signing up today. Um, and we also have the early bird pricing and early access discount that we want to talk to you about. So right now, you are the only people that know about this and know that the cart is open to sign up. Um, you, of course, can share this with anyone that you might think is interested. And as a special thanks, we are offering the opportunity to give this to you at the lowest rate possible. So we are giving it to you for a hundred dollars off prices will go up friday january 24th so to the pay in full amount is eight hundred dollars for regular meetings the 
the six biweekly meetings over the course of 12 weeks. It includes expert guidance from one of your coaches, um, as well as that bonus offer of the three months of access to the virtual community. We have payment plans available um, that you can check out. So by signing up today, you will save $100 off of that, um, that rate. And if you're looking at this and you're expecting and newly found out that you're pregnant and you're like, I want to sign up for all of them, we've got you covered. You can sign up for the three-phase bundle and save $300. Um, we are so confident that you are going to love this program, that we are willing to give you your money back with no questions asked. You can have a full refund after trying the first group and deciding that it might not be for you. No problem. No questions asked. Full refund. So are you willing to give it a try or do you want to kind of wing it, try it, figure it out as you go um, and hope for the best? Or are you ready to join us to build community, expand your skill set and gain a better understanding of what to expect? So what happens next? If you are interested, we want you to sign up. Remember that discounted rate is going to run out. So fill, so go on our website, sign up. Space is limited. We keep our groups small because we want to provide that really individualized support. Um, so go to fompregnanttoparent.com backslash early bird. Sign up for the group that best fits where you are. Um, and then you'll get a confirmation email with all of our group information you can um, wait for us and soon enough, you'll be joining our first group because they're starting next week. And if you're not quite ready to join, no problem. We've got you covered. We are going to be hosting a live Q&A call this Sunday. Um, all three of us, Rochelle, Emily, and I are all going to be on the call. You can have a chance to get to know us a little bit more, ask questions, and just hear more about our approach. So we really hope if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello, Come and uh, jump on the call. We'll be emailing out more information um, soon. So be on the lookout from in your inbox. So thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I hope to see you on Sunday. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to hello at fompregnanttoparent.com or check us out on social media at fompregnanttoparent. Um, I'm so excited to partner and I hope to hear from all of you soon. Be on the lookout for an email from Emily, our other coach, who will be talking about our final myth. Thank you so much.